Okay, so today I am going to talk to you about trends on the periodic table. The first thing I want you to notice when you're looking at the periodic table is that all elements are arranged in increasing atomic number. So here's your atomic number. Hydrogen has atomic number one. Helium is two, lithium three, beryllium four, and so on. The second trend that I want you to notice is that all elements are arranged in increasing atomic mass. So the atomic mass is going to be down at the bottom on this periodic table. So hydrogen has one, helium has four, lithium seven, beryllium nine, and so on. So increasing atomic number and increasing atomic mass. The third trend that I want to point out is that metals are found on the left-hand side of the periodic table and non-metals are found on the right-hand side of the periodic table. So you'll notice that there's a bold line and then this staircase here. So all of these elements are going to be metals and then all of these elements to the right hand side of the staircase plus hydrogen are your nonmetals. So metals to the left of the staircase and nonmetals to the right of the staircase. Okay, so I zoomed in a little bit on the periodic table. The next point that I want to discuss is that all elements in the same group have the same number of valence electrons. So all of the elements in group one are going to have one valence electron in their outer shell. So hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, and so on are all going to have one electron when we draw the bohr rutherford diagrams in their outermost shell. So in the outer orbit. So if we look at this little example, we have hydrogen has one orbit and it has one electron in the outer shell. Lithium, it has two in the first, but then again has one in the outer shell. Sodium has one electron in its outer shell and potassium also has one electron in its outer shell. And a reminder, valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost shell. So in the outside shell of all four of these examples in group one, they all have one electron. If we were to look again at group two, these are all going to have two electrons in their outer shell. So going back to this diagram, You'll notice that beryllium is going to have one, two electrons in the outer shell. Magnesium also has two electrons in its outer shell. Calcium has two electrons in its outer shell. And as you go along the periodic table, you'll notice that there's three, four electrons, five, six in oxygen and sulfur. And then moving over to the halogens, group 17 on the periodic table, they all have seven electrons in their outer shell. And then all of the noble gases have eight valence electrons or eight electrons in their outermost shell, um, with the exception of helium. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the outer shell of neon. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the outer shell of Argon, and so on if we continued down the periodic table. The row number corresponds to how many shells you will draw on your Bohr-Rutherford diagrams. So the number of electron shells or orbits is going to increase as you go down a group. Row number one is going to have one orbit. Row two, all of those elements are going to have two electron orbits or rings or shells. All of the elements in row three are going to have three shells. All of the elements in row four are going to have four shells and so on. So if we bounce back to this one more time, hydrogen and helium are going to have one orbit. Row two, you're going to see two rings or orbits. Row three, you will see one, two, three electron orbits. Row four is going to have four electron orbits drawn.